Hi, welcome to my ECG video blog. I'm Ken Grauer, and this is my third ECG video blog. Today we have a case, a patient with SVT and ST segment depression. For your convenience, I've made a website that lists key links to my ECG blog, my video blogs, and my introductory and advanced books and EPUBs on ECG interpretation. Above all is my email address. Please write me with your comments, feedback, and questions. On to today's topic. Today's case was sent to me by Dr. Ung from Taiwan. The patient was a previously healthy 60-year-old man who presented with palpitations and new onset chest pain. As best we could tell, he was not on any cardioactive medications and he had no prior history of heart disease. This was his 12 lead ECG on presentation. His blood pressure was 70 systolic at the time this ECG was recorded. Questions. What is the rhythm? Why so much ST segment depression? And what are you thinking? And last, what would you do clinically given this history of new chest pain, this rhythm, a blood pressure of 70 systolic, and the diffuse ST segment depression that we see? In the interest of keeping this case fairly short and targeting our comments to selected key points, we'll tell you that this patient was treated with adenosine, which successfully converted the rhythm to sinus. That said, let's break down our thought process in assessing this case. We'll start with the rhythm. What's our approach to rhythm analysis? The first thing to do is determine if the patient is hemodynamically stable. We do this by looking for symptoms attributable to the rapid rate, things like chest pain, shortness of breath, impaired mental function, which if due to the very fast rate are indicative of a symptomatic tachycardia. A lower limit blood pressure is harder to define, as not every patient with a systolic pressure below 90 will necessarily be unstable. On paper, this patient seems unstable. He was having chest pain and his blood pressure was 70 systolic. That said, sometimes you just got to be there. Not all of our patients read the textbook prior to having their infarct or arrhythmia. So although we can second guess the decision to use adenosine rather than immediately cardioverting the patient in this case, there's nothing like success. Adenosine worked and following administration of this drug, the patient converted to sinus rhythm. The ultra-short half-life of adenosine, less than 10 seconds, is a major reason why most patients tolerate this drug, even though you may see some major rate slowing and other adverse effects for the first 30 to 40 seconds after giving adenosine. How then to assess the rhythm? As we do for any rhythm, we use the P's, Q's, and 3R approach. Are there P waves? or at least evidence of atrial activity? Is the QRS wide or narrow? Which gives an idea of whether the rhythm is supraventricular or not. And the three Rs, rate of the rhythm, whether the rhythm is regular, and if P waves are present, whether P waves are related to the QRS. Let me emphasize that it doesn't matter in what sequence you consider these five parameters, and we often change the sequence we use depending on what is easiest to see for the rhythm at hand. The key is that you always look at all five parameters for every rhythm you encounter, as this is the only way not to forget important findings. The saying, watch your P's, Q's, and 3R's, reminds us of what to look for. Let's do this for the long lead two rhythm strip in this case. The rhythm looks to be regular. The QRS looks narrow, at least in the single lead. No definite P waves are seen. We don't think that the little hump just below the red X is a P wave. To us, it looks much more like part of the T wave, though we admit we can't be 100% certain. A quick Careful look at the long lead two does not suggest atrial activity as best we can tell from a single lead. That said, 
12 leads are better than one. Looking at each of the 12 leads confirms that the QRS complex is narrow and that no P waves are present, which leaves us with the rate, which we estimate to be about 180 per minute. Accurate estimation of rate is important in the differential diagnosis of regular SVT, that is narrow complex tachycardia. To estimate rate, we look at every second, or in this case, every third beat. Find a QRS that begins on a heavy line, red arrow. Count the number of large boxes for every third beat, which gives you one third of the actual rate. There are five large boxes within the time it takes for three beats. Therefore, one third of the rate is 300 divided by five, or 60 beats per minute. This means that the actual rate is 60 times 3, or about 180 per minute. This method works great when the rhythm is fast and regular. So, what have we just described? By the P's, Q's, 3R approach, we've established that the rhythm is fast, about 180 per minute, it is regular, the QRS is narrow, and P waves are not seen. This defines the rhythm as a regular SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, without normal atrial activity. For clarity, let's define what we mean by supraventricular. This term simply means that the impulse originates from at or above the AV node. Origin of the impulse is supra, that is, above the ventricles. So it could be arising from the SA node, from somewhere in the atria, or from the AV node, that is, anywhere from above the blue dotted line. While possible that a rhythm with a wide QRS could also be supraventricular, for example, if bundle branch block is present, there is no doubt that the rhythm is supraventricular if the QRS is narrow in all 12 leads. Thus, for practical purposes, a narrow QRS rules out VT. What then are the SVT rhythms? We list the main entities to think about here. Pearl. Three of these rhythms make up a short list that is good to remember whenever you encounter a regular SVT without normal atrial activity, which is precisely what we have here. This rhythm is not AFib because it is regular. It's also not MAT for the same reason. Automatic nodal rhythms are uncommon and don't go this fast. That leaves us with sinus tack, atrial flutter, or AVNRT as the likely etiology of a regular SVT in over 90% of cases. We can go one step further in this particular instance because of the heart rate. Sinus tachycardia is unlikely in a non-exercising adult when the heart rate is over 160 to 170 per minute. It's about 180 per minute in this case. Untreated atrial flutter is also unlikely because the rate of 180 per minute seen here is well above the rate of 140 to 160 per minute that we expect with atrial flutter. This leaves AVNRT. AV nodal reentry tachycardia as the almost certain diagnosis, which as mentioned earlier, converted to sinus rhythm with adenosine. The last issue to address in this case is the marked and diffuse ST segment depression we saw in the initial tracing, especially when associated with ST elevation and lead AVR green oval, the finding of diffuse ST depression should make one consider the possibility of severe coronary disease in the 60-year-old man with new onset chest pain. That said, all bets are off when the rate is so fast. In addition to drugs, strain from LVH, and electrolyte disorders, tachycardia is a common cause of ST depression. Keep in mind that time for diastolic filling is reduced when the heart rate is fast, which of itself may produce demand ischemia not necessarily associated with significant coronary vessel narrowing. The large amount of ST depression seen here is therefore another reason to consider electrical cardioversion sooner rather than later in this patient. This last ECG was obtained 30 minutes after conversion to sinus rhythm. At that time, the patient was stable and no longer having chest pain. 
although not quite as marked as during the tachycardia, there is still much ST depression in almost all leads except AVR. Surprisingly, cardiac cath showed no more than minimal obstructive coronary disease without need for acute reperfusion. The lesson learned was that even marked diffuse ST depression is not always indicative of severe coronary disease, even when ST depression persists after the RAID slows down. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this case. This is Ken Grauer saying goodbye for now.